Hello, I'm Suk Kyung Lee. I'm senior curator at Tate Modern and very glad to talk to you about Namjoon Pak exhibition, which is currently on display at Stedelijk Museum of Art in Amsterdam. The exhibition Namjoon Pak started at Tate Modern in London uh, last October in 19, uh, 2019. And after Stedelijk, the exhibition will also tour to the USA and also Singapore. These locations are very um, important for curators and organizers because they reflect Namjoon Pak's transnational practice across Europe, USA and Asia very well. And while his uh, contribution to the idea of video art, but also the practice uh, that linked technology and art are very generally uh, received and explored, perhaps one less explored and addressed part of his practice is uh, this very transnational vision he uh, pioneered. Also, this exhibition is really uh, trying to explore how Peck's future became our present as well. As we all know, we have witnessed his idea of electronic superhighway becoming our reality of internet. And we are also seeing uh, a lot of other notions he um, sort of uh, proposed, like interactivity and multidirectional global communication in all kinds of um, settings, like social media and video sharing platforms. They just change all the time and quite quickly that I wouldn't really name any specific names, but you know what I mean by these things. And also this um, everyday experience of changes is quite prominent uh, and very present more than ever by this current global pandemic at the moment. And uh, our dependence on digital tools is also increasing because we are quite restricted uh, in on our own environment and home, especially in life and work. Today's online talk is also a reflection of these changes and sort of the virtual nature of everyday life is also reflected in this talk. So it's quite nice that although I couldn't really go to Amsterdam and meet you in person, in some ways, um, this uh, digital kind of presentation and interchange allow us to uh, get connected in different ways in time and place. So in a way beyond that given space and that our given time, hopefully this will um, sort of sustain its life uh, beyond this point as well. One of the negative impacts we could talk about about this virus pandemic is the restriction of movement, especially between national borders. We all enjoyed this very free movement um, around different borders, but borders are really both porous and rigid, and they fluctuate with other factors like protectionism, wars, and conflict, as we see in daily news nowadays. But it also supports global trade, and there, that has always been the case, while some, some parts of our border crossings have been easy and very uh, encouraged, but some parts weren't. And Namjoon Pek was um, most interested in horizontal communication and crossing these borders conceptually, but also physically. Although his work was never uh, very overtly political in general, but his works uh, indicated certain negation of cultural, national, and ide ideological hegemonies. And the work like Global Groove uh, from 1973, you can see how Peck expressed his vision of our world that is global, but also fun. The work was uh, first presented as a public broadcasting on WNET TV in the USA on the 30th of January, 1974. And it was supposed to be both education and entertainment. And when we think about the, the sort of TV environment of 1974, there were very limited channels and most broadcasting were really perceived as one way messaging. And viewers were very famously um, passive and we were just supposed to be watching. 
So at least what was given as a content was quite uh, flexible to Peck's point of view. And he wanted to make a content that can be quite truly uh, interconnected. And the way he developed satellite project was also um, uh, inspired by this desire to make real-time interconnections between people, space, art, and culture. 1980s was a time of um, rising nationalism and also a continuing tension of the Cold War, as we can recall. So um, throughout 70s and 80s, Peck was very much interested in how to connect the, the world and how to use art and culture to make people understand uh, each other. Peg's first uh, satellite project, uh, titled Good Morning, Mr. Orwell, was uh, broadcasted uh, originally on the first day of January 1984. It was obviously uh, an homage and also a challenge to uh, George Orwell's same title novel, which was 1984. In Orwell's world, and in that novel, a key message was really about uh, Big Brother, how we are being watched and controlled and mediatized. But um, Namjoon's optimism was quite the opposite of that scale in a way. And he was really against the binary between high art, entertainment, West, East, and traditional and futuristic as well. When the work was first uh, broadcasted, it uh, eventually had 25 million viewers. So that really uh, reached out at that time, especially in the 80s, to the unexpected audience and a huge number of audience across different continents. And the second project, Bye Bye Kipling, was in 86. And it was uh, again in response to uh, a literary work by Rudyard Kipling, who had an idea that um, the reconciliation between the East and West was actually impossible. But again, Peck was uh, quite different in his opinion and wanted to really see the whole world from the perspective of Asia, where Asian game was uh, held as a sporting event and wanted to um, amalgamate all kinds of human activities, including art and sport into this um, broadcasting. The cultural translatability was also in his mind, it seems and different cultures were uh, juxtaposed without much explanation, but people could actually see uh, what was traditional, but what was modern, but also uh, from uh, different countries and cultures. It was um, a quite of a sort of festival-like work. And the last satellite project of the 80s was in 1988, called Wrap Around the World. And it was at the time of Seoul Olympics, um, and Seoul obviously had a hugely personal and emotional um, connection with Peck himself. Uh, and it was also at the end of the Cold War era. And, and we could probably see uh, from the work how this uh, planetary civilizations were on the horizon through this work. And we are now very aware that um, this idea of Big Brother is still uh, endangering sort of our everyday existence, but also sort of in a very different way permeates our daily lives too. There are many conflicts, privacy versus surveillance, but also information versus uh, fake news and democratic versus man manipulative and independent against commodified and mobilization against mediatization. And some may uh, wonder through um, seeing this exhibition, how can we be just so optimistic? And I, I kind of agree that we are aware of different sides, more sort of darker side of this technological development and how we just continuously communicate with each other and also encouraged to be out there um, and be available to others' views. But I think it's about ethics of interconnection and it, it uh, depends on our own um, perspectives. But what I would like to really um, emphasize is Peck really contributed to turn our attention to technology in the context of art 
and emphasizing what we could do to make things better in the given situations. So I really quite like that sort of ultimately optimistic vision he shared with us. Another side of really interesting um, way to see Peck's work is to see this um, juxtaposition of technology and spiritual uh, sort of entities. So in the work like TV Buddha, which is a great work actually in the Stedelix uh, collection, we can see Peck's ideas around meditation, but also surveillance, sometimes passive, but sometimes very interactive. And um, in a very simple um, uh, sort of allocation of one statue of Buddha and one uh, TV, and just one camera capturing that sort of real uh, time uh, meditation, you can see how these simple messages could also convey quite complex and philosophical ideas too. And as you can see at the background uh, of my talk, TV Garden is also a very interesting work which has been um, remade for this exhibition especially. So TV Garden doesn't exist as, as a work because it always involves living plants and a lot of TVs. As you can see, they are not flat screen TVs you are very familiar with. So we had to find a lot of old, um, old school <laughs> and actually old CRT TVs uh, from uh, specialists and a lot of, uh, sort of recycling kind of facilities as well. So what you see in um, the work like TV Garden is also this um, sometimes forced, but um, kind of in a way very engaging um, juxtaposition of nature and technology. And we have to live with them and um, might as well, uh, we should really take an ownership of this relationship and trying to make the best of these uh, developing situations. And I'd like to just um, finish this talk with one particular work called Sistine Chapel. It's a hugely impressive and very um, interesting work you can see at the end of the exhibition. Stedelik's uh, presentation of this work is absolutely fantastic. I'm a little jealous actually that it looks better here <laughs> than at Tate Modern. But uh, the work is actually a, a reconstruction. Again, it didn't exist as a physical work because it just was lots of projectors and um, the video footage. Uh, it was first shown in 1993 uh, at Venice Biennale uh, when Peck represented German pavilion, very transnational selection, I would say. And um, with Hans Hacker, he won the Golden Lion for the pavilion that year. And the work uh, uh, sort of reflects on a lot of elements like Marco Polo, who was Venetian, and also Genghis Khan, who Marco Polo went to see, and Venice as a space, but also Mongolia and Asia at large, to, to see those connections that are actually beyond our time. And you can see boys, Madonna, woman, and Korean folk dancers, and also Morris Cunningham and Mongolian tribe uh, footage. It's a really, I would call uh, an audio visual maximalism we can see in this work. And it can only be fully um, appreciated in person, really. So if you could um, see the Stedelic exhibition, I highly recommend, especially for this work. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to say that the exhibition had been uh, extended beyond this original date uh, to accommodate the current situation until the 4th of October. And I really do think it will be one of those um, unforgettable experience of the future that is really now.